And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This ministry is very fortunate this morning that we were able to come along to an ecumenical service. We are outside the Catholic Cathedral, and as you can see, people are coming out on this Churches Together walk. This is an apostasy because this is not the church that our Lord spoke about to the apostles in Matthew's wonderful gospel. This is an apostate church which is up to its neck in politics, religion, money laundering and dare I say it, the abuse of young children. This week one of the most damning reports came out about the church in Ireland and if James can just pan over for a little bit I would like to hold up this paper that I have brought along. What I'm going to tell you, friends, I do not make up myself, because this has been systematic abuse and rape that has gone on for the last hundred years in the Archdiocese of Dublin. Some four archbishops, John Charles McQuaid, Dermot Ryan, Kevin McNamara, and Desmond Connell, refused to hand over the relevant information. Hundreds, possibly thousands of young men were raped, abused sexually and physically. This ministry can point the finger at the Archdiocese of Dublin, but friends, it goes further. It is like a web of a tentacle that is spread out throughout the world. And this diocese is just as guilty. And this bishop, I would say, I would suggest, guilty in the cover-up that this country has done. Friends, it doesn't please us to come along and tell you all of this, because what we are seeing today is the beginning of the one world church, the one world religion, that will be up and running and oiled and ready for when the Antichrist comes. We believe in this ministry that we are in end times. We look for the signs of the coming Antichrist and when he comes he will be taken over this ecumenical movement of all the churches which sadly in this country have all joy in hands to be here. Some half an hour ago a young man came up to me, a very smartly dressed young African man and he said, I've been told to come here by my pastor, are you going in? And we said no, we will not be going in because we do not believe in the ecumenical movement. He thought about my words for a minute and he said, what should I do? And I said, if you are born again and you love the Lord Jesus, oh yes, he said, that I do, then I urge you not to go in there today, but to stand on this road, on this side of the road. Whether he's gone in or not, I do not know, but we are seeing some of the higher ranking authorities now. Oh, and here comes, it looks like the local authorities are here. There's the mayor. You can tell how much this ecumenical movement has moved in the last 30 years when you have all the churches together. When all this started off back in the mid-60s, early 70s, you had few churches involved. But now they all seem to want to do it. I gave you a Bible reading at the beginning, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. But this ministry, ex-Catholics for Christ, does not believe that this is the church. We suggest that this is an apostate church, run by a Pope, who only a few years ago, when he was Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, was happy to offer safe houses to priests from many different countries, so that they would not be prosecuted for their hideous crimes of rape, suppression and violence. This man now is the so-called Vicar of Christ. We say he is not the Vicar of Christ. We say he is a false prophet. I want to say a few things here. What you're seeing here are all the liberal and ecumenical churches coming together. About 95% of churches in the UK are in the ecumenical movement. And uh, because this is a public event, we are entitled by UK law to be here to cover it and uh, because we cherish free speech uh, we're not going to be using bullhorns uh, or causing obstruction they have the right to march if they choose to 
we feel they are in grave error and uh, we've covered events like this before and I can tell you from past experience that these are not the easiest of people to speak to. They may claim to be Christian but Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7 that many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, and he says I never knew you, depart from me. A lot of people are trusting in their good works to save them, they're trusting in their baptism to save them, uh, they're even trusting in the gift of speaking in tongues to save them. The Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anybody should boast. Uh, we've got a couple of brothers here today who are giving out tracts and having their own presence. It'd be nice to talk to all of these people and tell them why we are against this event, but uh, they are in a system, and unless the Lord opens their eyes, unless they soften their hearts, they will remain in spiritual darkness, and uh, tragically this becomes an ecumenical road to hell. Well, there you have it, a short commentary on what is happening today. Probably in many towns throughout this country, you're going to see more and more of this worldwide as all the apostate churches come under the influence of Rome. There's not much you can do about it individually except pray. But as we know in the end times, Christians will be persecuted. Brothers and sisters are being persecuted throughout the world now for Christian beliefs. But we are still fortunate with that we are able to come along to an event like this to have cordial relations with the very professional Greater Manchester Police who have shown us no hostility at all. So I hope I'll see that young man, maybe again, maybe today, to urge him perhaps to come and join us. Time is short, we are in end times. Okay, here we are, stage two of the ecumenical march. And uh, if you know anything about the UK, twice a year all the ecumenical churches come out together to do a march. Normally Christmas and Easter, this is the first time that I've seen a march like this in Manchester. Of course the Pope's going to be here in 2010. And uh, this is probably a dummy run ahead of that. Some very good people here, very genuine I'm sure, but they are deceived. They're under the umbrella of the Roman Catholic Church. Rome controls the ecumenical movement. And uh, I'm sure there are some saved people here, but the Bible says not to be yoked with unsaved people. Rome is the great whore, and there we have a woman with a collar. No female ministers in the New Testament. And uh, I hope that these people come out of this. And uh, we're going to be heading down to the cathedral shortly to uh, join some brothers who are going to be doing some preaching. As you can see, an event like this needs a lot of police manpower, but uh, they are entitled to their march. Uh, we live in a free country, just about, and there's still freedom of speech, although it's heavily limited. And uh, it would be nice to talk to some of these people, but uh, the problem about being deceived is you don't know you are deceived. This is the reality of it. Uh, I was in a Catholic church for 15 years. You know, we've had four or five priests in our family. All good people, but unless you're trusting the blood of Christ alone to save you, you won't be saved. Good works are important, but they come after salvation, not before. It's not a very good show, is it? Four people came to come an event, which potentially could have had up to a thousand plus people. I can't stress enough the importance of being separated uh, from apostasy, liberalism, heresy, so on and so forth. Whether people realise that they're on the road to hell or not is another thing. I think I'm also concerned that I'm not having any gospel preached here uh, as a so-called ecumenical march. There's nothing whatsoever. And I can see the man that Patrick was talking to, sadly in the queue. Obviously he didn't want to break away from uh, his pastor. Very sad. There's a gentleman. But of course he can't come away because it's going to cost him something. And this is religion, it does cost you something to break away. Patrick's calling him but he won't come. He wants to come out, but he's in an organisation. If you're born again, then you're in the body of Christ and there's true unity. But if you're not born again, then it's simply religion. 
and uh, the Bible says the road to hell is broad and there is a way which seems right but the ways are off are of death side abbreviation from the book of Proverbs okay here we are outside the Anglican Cathedral and uh, this just caught my attention during the Reformation all of the statues were destroyed and uh, the Bible does con uh, condemn images graven images and here we are in 2009 and uh, there's an image been quietly erected and it looks quite new. We know that uh, in Canterbury Cathedral uh, you can now say the Hail Mary and uh, in reality the Church of England stands for nothing but uh, it was Charles Spurgeon back in 18 something he said that if you are born again and if you're in the Church of England that you should exit as soon as possible. Uh, light has no fellowship with darkness and uh, I just plead anybody watching this video, whether you're a Catholic or an Anglican, to become born again. Here we are at the end of the road. We've arrived at the Anglican Cathedral. And I think what uh, is tragic is that the true Christians, we come out in the streets all the time to preach, give out Bible tracts, free Bibles, so on and so forth. But unfortunately it takes an ecumenical march like today uh, to bring out all of these churches and organizations. The Catholic Church was unsuccessful in conquering Christianity during the Dark Ages, so uh, Ron Carley, uh, John the 23rd, came up with the brainchild, thanks to Cardinal Bayer, to have an ecumenical movement to bring all the churches together under the umbrella of Rome. And uh, over 40 years later, that's now what we've got. There are still some faithful churches in the UK, very small uh, groups of Christians who are not ecumenical, who don't believe in it, and uh, they are now considered the fringe of Christendom. I can hear somebody preaching, Brother Miguel. Looks like the police don't like him preaching. There's Amelia giving up some gospel tracts as they wait to go in. There's many ways to witness to people, either through preaching, giving out uh, gospel tracts, or using a banner. All these people need to be saved. I was in an organisation for many years and if somebody hadn't witnessed to me, I would have stayed in that system. Don't you see? You have been misled! You have been led astray! Don't go after! Teachings and doctrines of men that lead others astray because they are the blind leading the blind. They dig a hole and they fall into a pit and lead you down with a pit with them. Don't go after man made traditions. Don't go after the doctrines. Turn from them. Repent from your involvement with a pagan church. The Church of Rome has invented so many man-made doctrines. The amount of idolatry that they commit. The Bible says that all idolaters are going to hell. Go after God. Don't go to the priest. Don't go to the priest. Don't go after this false unity, this false love. Still quite a lot of police here at the moment and uh, the preaching will continue on uh, whether you agree with Brother Miguel or not we do live in a country where you're entitled to your own opinion and uh, a lot of these people may not have ever heard the gospel before but uh, McGraw feels strongly about this, as he should do, as should all Bible-believing Christians. And uh, we hope in time to come that uh, perhaps salvation comes to some people. I believe this is Tony, who's come up from London today talking to one of these street pastors. I don't know him personally, but I believe he's brought 1,500 uh, pamphlets to give out to people today. And uh, if just one person repents, if just one person comes out of this organisation, it's been a great success.